Hold up. Everybody right there. Get into it. Everybody right there. Get involved. Everybody just... I'm here today with Marva and Mike Threat from one of our partner organizations, the Greater Eastside uh, Field of Dreams Block Club. Thanks for being here with us today. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Um, so Marva, can you tell us a little bit about how you started the Block Club? Well, we started the Block Club about three years ago and uh, actually the, the idea formulated in our yard. Uh, we were actually sitting down and we got to talking and me and my husband were like, saying that we're just having two voices, we need more voices, and he had got the idea from one of my uncles, and so we decided, oh yeah, well how do you form a block club? So we got with our councilman, and it started up from there. We started doing flyers, uh, and uh, I was quite surprised how many people actually wanted to do a block club. And then we started with two streets, and we ended up having 11 streets as we are now. Okay, and what are the borders right now? Our borders are William and Broadway, uh, Fillmore, Howard, and uh, I think that's it, right? It runs, the, yeah, the, it's a right now, it's a square. <laughs> it runs from Wilson to Kretner. Kretner, from Broadway and Kretner to Howard and Kretner on each end. Yeah. So, Fillmore and Broadway, William and, William and, William and Fillmore. William and Fillmore, and it runs those 11 blocks right there. Oh, okay. And Mike, you've lived in that neighborhood since 1968, right? Yes, I have. And how do you think it's changed since you uh, started living there? Well, since I've been living here, 19, since 1968, we've seen that basically, I, would, I, I don't want to say destruction of the neighborhood, the decline, the decline of the neighborhood where people were unable to keep up with the houses and things and, the, and the, the maintenance and the caring for their homes. So a lot of homes was tore down and now it's a big void. Mm -hmm. Made a big void. So okay. right now I want I would love to see the neighborhood come back. Mm -hmm. Cause they're always calling it the hood. Mm -hmm. Hood represents something evil to me. And I would really love to see the neighbor come back in the hood so people can come back and see it as a community. It's still a strong community, vibrant community, and a lot of people still live there in that community that love that community just like me. Yes. And right now, we're in a fight, but we're going to win. <laughs> okay. And Marva, on the radio show, you talked a little bit about what the Black Club is doing to kind of put the neighbor back in the neighborhood. Um, and how how would you say that you're doing that? Well, we're, we've, we've established a relationship with the police department, with the um, captain of uh, C District, with uh, going down to the councilman for the uh, police uh, committee, talking about how... Uh, we want to have safety, how we would like to have two-man patrol cars, how we would like to have foot patrol, and developing that kind of relationship with our uh, police department, and bringing mostly about the, doing the safety in our community. That's what we're worried about the most, and bringing businesses back into our neighborhood um, by having the police headquarters move down to 998 um, Broadway, which is the old Kmart building, which was the Sattler building, and having that presence there that will make it safe for the rep, for the um, community and the businesses to come back into our um, neighborhoods. One of the things that I would like to see happen right now is that people in a whole will start investing time in their own community. Stop sitting on the bench waiting on somebody else to go out and get a job done. Right now, we're partnering with the Hope Center on Padawiski and Memorial. Um, we're partnering with um, Fillmore Forward. Um, we're partnering with um, anybody really to work with us. We've been partnering with so many different organizations. I just wanted to mention a couple. And with um, these partnerships, we hope to bring diversity back and bring the neighborhood back. The Hope Center is a beautiful place. Everyone need to contact them. You need a meal, you need anything. 
they help you with your heat, your, your lighting, your gas, food. Check them out. Don't let that resource sit in the middle of our community going unutilized. Take advantage of some of the things that's being put in our community. But right now, we need roofs. Yes. We need, a lot of people need repairs. And a lot of things down here. These homes are still good 100 year old homes. I've been living in one for over 30 years. And it's still a beautiful building. So I, I love my home. We, we, we would like to have development, but we want, to develop, we want to be able to control what the developments do. We don't want developers coming in telling us how, how our neighborhoods is. We don't want cookie cutter houses. We want our houses to be back at the way that they are now because they're historical houses. They're beautiful houses. I don't want everything looking just alike. And uh, so therefore, and then when developers do come in, we want to be able to get the jobs. We don't want the ones that just promise us the things. We have a lot of people who have very good skills, and we want them to utilize the people in the community to make sure that these projects don't be given to someone outside of our neighborhood and don't know our neighborhood. And to give them long-term jobs, not just these little simple jobs, but long-term jobs. And um, that's what we fight for. Right. Well, thank you so much. It's great to hear about the success of your Black Club and also, you know, the, the forward movement that you've been able to have in terms of having a voice and being able to have that kind of community control that you're talking about. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you in the future. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.